Katie. Yeah. Katie's here. Katie. Yeah. Grab, grab somebody out there. Young man, would you be willing to come hold this for us? You're going to be a YouTube star now, Chapman. Right. You got to look for it. Oh, yeah. Yes, Handsome sir. dude. Yes, sir. Hold that. Wow. That is pretty light. I'm sorry. I'm not getting away from the microphone. I'm just excited no, to be on camera again. Why am I doing this? Oh, People would rather see you on camera anyway. And here we are with Fostech, starting off part two of our day one coverage. David, thanks for taking the time with us, man. Thanks and, so much for being here. Oh, absolutely. And I've been a big fan of Fostech for a long time. Your echo triggers, lightweight, guns, does fantastic performing stuff. And on top of that, you guys might recognize the origin as well. Just awesome products all around. And uh, you've got something super lightweight today with us as well, one of your rails, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So this right here has blown my mind. Can you just tell us a little bit about it, materials, all that stuff? So this is uh, made of a magnesium aluminum alloy. Um, it's roughly the same strength as 6061 billet. It's actually just above it with 33% savings in weight. So, and when you hand it to somebody, they really are like, wow, is that even real? They yes. don't even think it's metal. Right. So. No, I, uh, Grant, behind the camera over here, made it's like, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think that would work well as a paperweight. Right, no, it definitely <laughs> that, makes a difference. That is amazing. With all of the hardware included, this comes in at just, just a little bit over three ounces, right? About three and, three, and a half ounces. About three and a half yeah. ounces. That is incredible. So I think what we're going to do too here in a bit, I'm just going to hand this to somebody and be like, hey, guess how much this weighs. And if you guess it right, maybe maybe I have a Lancer mag laying around or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. And you guys are in for a treat because you might recognize <laughs> this gentleman here. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Oh, Clint, don't stick a microphone in my face. It's been a long time, dude, <laughs> since I've been on camera. I was passing by and saw you here with my favorite people in the industry, Fostec. So uh, this is a, a pleasure for me. You're putting me on the spot a little bit. <laughs> yes, I am because, well, it's funny enough, we were at Range Day yesterday and one of the guys commented, I really miss seeing Ben, the surplus import, stuff like that. So ironically enough, Here's Ben, say <laughs> hey. Ben. Uh, <laughs> let, let me say something about Fostec if I can. Yes, sir. Please. Again, some of my favorite folks in the gum business, these people have always been honorable to deal with. They make a fantastic product that's unique on the marketplace. Their triggers just set the world on fire. And I know you've got some proprietary technology in your trigger that you and I mm -hmm. talked about very yep. recently that yep. prevents you from being able to outrun it. That's so correct. therefore you don't have any hiccups or jams with a Fostec trigger. Right. Uh, you called it a governor. Yeah, it's, it's, I've we shot these things really fast, but then you say they have a governor. It's, it's actually the trigger lock. So the what the mechanism does is it won't allow you to pull the trigger until the carrier is forward and in battery, basically is what it does. Right, and for those of you that don't know, Fostec has a fantastic trigger called the Echo Trigger. It allows you to go bang, bang when you release the trigger. And we I'm pretty sure we got some footage. I, I can yeah, run that thing pretty quick. You do it. You go bang, 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 bang. Yeah, I go faster than that. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, you do go faster than that for sure. Yeah. But what always amazes me when I'm at this booth, and attendance at SHOT Show is down a little bit so far this year, but uh, for, for a number of reasons that the, the thing we can't say on camera, right? From right. what I understand. But uh, whenever I'm at the Fostec booth, they always have the biggest crowd because people are just amazed at this technology. And one thing that doesn't translate well, either in a print ad or on a video like this, is nobody can feel that rifle. Nobody can feel the weight. Yeah. If you hold this thing in your hands, yeah. or that yeah. 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 See, I don't know I'm holding anything. Right. That's amazing. I can feel it touching my fingers, but that's it. But what I'm always amazed by is when people come in from the outside and they hold one, they say, oh my gosh, what is, never, Katie. Yeah. Katie's here. Katie, why am I doing this? Oh, People like would rather see you on camera anyway. Yeah. Everybody, of course, there's Katie. Hey guys, how's it going? I don't know if you've played with Fostec. Give us a I, all I'm saying is I had a lot of guns yesterday, and this is the lightest one by far. You can literally hold it. One finger, look. <laughs> wow. Super light. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure awesome. meeting you. Yeah, thank you, I'm going to let you guys awesome. finish thank out. Thank you, thank you. Right. Thank you David. Good I'm going to get him down the aisle. Yeah. We'll Thanks, Clint. Of Appreciate course, what you guys do, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, hey, thank you so much, guys. So, <laughs> I know it's always kind of fun and stuff like that, of course, but really you can't understand the ergonomics and just how light some of these rifles are until you do get them in your hand, so go buy one. Uh, with that being said, though, of course, one of the most popular firearms you do have to offer is the Fostec Origin, which you haven't shot one of these yet, have you, Katie? No, I haven't shot one. So, this is 
This has the claim to be the fastest cycling shotgun in the world. Is that correct? That's what they say on the internet. That's what, that's what I've said. So, <laughs> Yeah. No, that is it is a very, shotgun. very fast cycling shotgun. What makes it so fast is we pick our gas up very early, right. right at the end of the chamber. We divert it forward, and so we're capturing the gas right at the end of the shell, yeah. which is where the pressures are the highest. That's what allows us to cycle with it being so short. Yeah. And it's also what increases the speed of the carrier. Yeah. So that That's fantastic. And do y'all make these in full auto by chance? No. Okay, well, I'm just throwing that out there. Just throwing that out You're there. You're not the first one who had thrown that out there, by the way. Okay, I'm just saying, if you really want it to be fast cycling, you know yeah, what I mean? You won't be the yeah. last either. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Comment down below. No, all right. Anyway, hey, thank you so much for taking the time. Good to see you. Thank you so much, Clint. Of course, a treat yep. to see Ben, you know, yep. and yep. all that. Katie, Appreciate thanks. Thank thanks, you. Katie. Yeah. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, so we're over here at the Desert Tech booth, and I've seen something that's absolutely blown my mind, but I don't know a whole lot about it, so Jeff, thank you for taking the time, man. I'm honestly, I'm going to let you take it away. Sure. All right. Welcome back. Such a natural. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is our Quattro 15. Uh, it is an AR-15 lower receiver that is uh, built specifically to handle our Quad Mag 53, which is a polymer quad stack magazine. It has a single spring, single follower, and is quad stacked all the way to the top. The idea being to simplify the feeding of the cartridges into the rifle. It util utilizes some ribs inside as well to keep the cartridges away from the wall, so any debris that does get into the magazine is, gonna get, is going to go by the side. So it's meant to be a reliable quad stack magazine that is the same size and height as a 30 round PMAG. So you can drop it into the rifle and without increasing the size of the rifle, and the mobility of the rifle, you've got 53 rounds every time. So this is the Quattro 15 lower receiver. It has a proprietary mag catch and bolt uh, catch on it. So those are included with the receiver. Everything else is completely interchangeable with your standard AR-15 parts. So you can use your buffer tubes, triggers, pins, everything will drop right into it. So other than that, it's a standard AR-15 receiver. You just get 53 rounds with it this time. So the first off, one thing I like about this the most is the ambidextrous bolt release bolt catch. I think if you're going to come out with any new product in 2022, that has to be a standard. And I think you guys it. hit it off the mark. Um, what's crazy too is holding this thing is it, there's literally no weight difference in a standard AR-15. Correct. Until you load it. That's what I say. Yeah, until you load it. But <laughs> even then, it's cool because it's the same size, roughly lengthwise, as a PMAG. Correct. So I think, man, you guys absolutely knocked it out the park with this I guy. I also forgot to mention, Alec, the we have an adapter to drop in here that snaps in. Then you can run your standard PMAGs. Really? In this same receiver. You keep blowing my mind Sorry. literally yeah, every so, second. So there you go. <laughs> All right, man, well, let's go see what else you got going on. So what exactly is this that we're looking at? This is the Trek 22. It is a clamshell polymer stock that goes on a Ruger 1022. Okay. Uh, it's a bullpup configuration, obviously. Uh, the point of that is to reduce the size of the rifle, so this is kind of like your ultimate throw behind the seat of the truck yeah. gun. Uh, it also works great for kids because it brings the balance, the bullpup design brings the balance of the rifle further to the rear. Yeah. We've all seen little kids trying to shoot yeah, their 22s and they're, like, and they're going like yeah. this, right? This helps a lot uh, to avoid that because they can actually balance the rifle being much shorter. Yeah. Uh, the, the Trek has a bunch of additional features. We've got in, in uh, stock magazine storage for 10 round mags. All of the factory Ruger controls are retained. So your mag release, your safety, everything's all right there just like it always has been. Uh, the trigger is the trigger pull weight is actually reduced through the linkage. Okay. So it uses kind of a uh, bell crank system there to reduce the pull weight of the trigger, gotcha. hopefully to improve it. It's also got a free floated barrel channel so it should stay as accurate as it was. Gotcha, okay. Uh, and you've got all kinds of mounting options on the front here. You've got a pick rail across the top, M-lock rail uh, slots down the sides. Yeah. So you can customize however you want, which is hard to do on a wood stock. Yeah, exactly. Man, I look at this thing and I see, like like you said, it's great for kids, but this is also like kind of the ultimate little backpack survival gun, if you it will. Like be. it's super small, it's lightweight. Not only can you do the BX25 mags, but you have the extra mag storage in here as well. Exactly. I'm, again, blown away. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a pretty fun little gun. We like it. 
Awesome, man. Well, Jeff, thank you for taking the time, man. Really appreciate it. All right, guys, so off camera, we were having a discussion, and you know, as you guys know, the NGSW program has been all the hype this year, so NGSW came up. So, Nick, thank you for taking the time. So, what's the backstory with you guys in NGSW? So, we were in the first round of trials with PCP. They okay. did a polymer case ammunition, and we were uh, set up to go into the next phase. Unfortunately, we didn't get down selected. Uh, but the plans for the next phase was to actually uh, produce a quad stack magazine because they wanted 50 round capability and a real small compact package. Okay. And so when we didn't get selected, we took what uh, we were working on and converted it into the AR platform to come out with a commercial uh, option. Gotcha. So, gotcha. So, and it's you guys have done a phenomenal job, man. Like I said, there's I was walking around and I seen this and I was like, we've got to get coverage on this because I've never seen anything like this but that's news to me I didn't know that you guys were even a part of the NGSW program or even thought about doing it so I learned something new today so right. yeah so we have a, a we'll have to send you some pictures of our uh, NGSW submissions yeah we yeah, had power rails and fire control system it's pretty cool yeah that would be awesome man thank you again buddy you all already know I'd be over here Daniel Defense. Jason, thanks for taking the time with us, man. And uh, you've got something here that I bet creates a lot of noise. It does. It's, uh, it's quite the uh, fire breathing dragon. So, this is our new DD5 12 and a half inch SBR. So, if you're not familiar, we got all the regular DD5s behind us V3, V4, V5. Then 762 currently. Um, unfortunately, we're not making any other calibers just because with optimization of ballistics with 308, 12 and a half is about as short as you can get. Right. So the neat thing about it is, is yeah, you do have to pay a tax stamp for it, but it's still all the same great features that run in our DD5 to now. So a lot of people don't know this, but the bolt carrier group, let me break it open here. It's nice and DLC coated. We also offer a bolt, a buffer system in the bolt. Oh, wow. So it adds like a dead blow, so you're not getting a bunch of firing pin bolt jump, yeah. so you're not accidentally setting off rounds. It's also, like I said, nicely DLC coated, easy to clean, super wipe. Swipe clean, good to roll. That's pretty interesting. Will you guys operate in a pistol configuration? No, no, no. With the way the ATF's going right now oh, and the predicting okay. future, we yeah. just don't want to make a, a big, you. bold move like that and yeah. then it backfire on us. Okay, I understand that. Well, that's pretty cool, man. So I'm, I, well, I need to get my hands on one of these and take it to the range <laughs> and try it, obviously, because that looks pretty sweet. Have you guys tried shooting it suppressed? Anything yes, like that? No, okay. it works great suppressed. It still offers the two positional gas block that all of our oh, others awesome. offer, yeah. so you can shoot it suppressed and unsuppressed. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. And it's still got all the ambidextrous controls on both sides for your bolt catch and mag release. That's great. Actually, yeah, so got all of that here because that's something pretty new too, is it not? Yep, so all of our DD5s have always been ambidextrous, yeah. but we wanted to keep it the same. Yes. So that way, if someone did have an old DD5 and they right. were working on it and they bought this, yeah. it's compatible with both. That's fantastic, excellent. Well, sweet, so guys, again, this is the shorty DD5, but we got a couple other things we're gonna be covering too, so let's go check those out. Now we're over here with the Delta 5 Pros, and this is this is something you're excited about, yeah, right? This, this one's my bread and butter. I was a long range shooter in the military for six years, and I did it for the government for a couple years, so all in all, eight years total. I still shoot PRS for DD awesome. and precision shooting, so yeah. So what you're looking at right here is we have our 6 inch 308 Delta 5 Pro and the one underneath it is our 18 inch 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, it's, the, it's still the original Delta 5 action and barrel but now in a pro chassis platform so now it's more rigid and it's more accurate. That's also a point. There's a lot of points of modularity on this gun that a lot of people like. One of the big key features is we offer an Arca Swiss rail automatically integrated into the rail. So there's no stacking tolerances, you're not trying to stack things on top of stuff, right? Uh, another big deal is our barricade stop on the magazine well. A lot of these are integrated into the magazine well. There's actually a space underneath. I can look, I'll flip it over for you. Where if something wants to happen, you're not binding your magazine and creating feeding issues. So we made that nice and robust. Another key point is it has a quick barrel interchange. So we offer these in 308, 65, and we have a six mil variant. So if you want to change the barrel, it takes about five minutes. You're just going to pull the fore end off, drop the action, switch the barrel out, and then boom, put it all back together. You're ready to roll. Gotcha. Um, ambidextrous mag release for those that are left handed, right handed. And then we have what we call a thumb rest. So a lot of precision shooters or marksmen use a false grip, right? So you have a sympathetic response when you squeeze your trigger finger. This allows you to rest it so you're not creating any of those issues. It's also interchangeable and you can move it forward and backwards. So it flips a lot both sides. Moving on further back to our buttstock. Super user friendly. When you're shooting precision rifles, you want to be comfortable. That's what creates consistency and accuracy, correct? So now you can adjust your buttstock, your comb height up and down. 
You can also tow this to conform to the cheek bone. Butt socks the same way. You just unloosen your tension knobs. You can pull in and out for your length of pull, and you can adjust up and down. And it also tows back and forth to fit. So that's that's that in a nutshell. Um, the reason why we've been getting a lot of questions is why we chose that 16 inch for 308 and 18 inch for 65. Same thing for the DD5 SBR for its optimization for that caliber. That's, that's where we can get the most ballistically efficient and targets. Yeah, that's. That's awesome. So yeah, I, I need to run one of these, man. These things are so cool. And, and I, yeah, and I've talked with Frank. You guys remember Frank from the uh, manufacturer tour, and he he absolutely loves his. Oh, I know yes. he does. Yeah. I love mine. I, I love it. Yeah. And one other thing I want to mention out is those that have bought the original Delta Five, we now are going to start selling this chassis as standalone, so they can convert the original Delta Five into a Delta Five Pro. That's and cool. then we're also going to start selling a standalone chassis for Remington 700 footprint actions. Yeah. So now we're branching out into hold the next net market for it. That's that's fantastic. It's not like the Remington 700 was ever popular either. So yeah. yeah, exactly. There's so many of them. <laughs> right, exactly. Very cool. And we've got one other thing we need to talk about, right? Oh, yep. And before we move oh, on, yeah. I just want to hit on it because this one actually has it. We've incorporated a continuous pick rail, which allows the optic, you can mount day or night optics. So if you want to put a thermal or a night vision optic in front of your scope, so if you want to hunt it at night or shoot at night, you can do so. That's, that's perfect. Okay. So I'm definitely a fan of that for sure. So yeah. Let's go ahead and let's move over to that one last thing we need to talk about. Dang it. I've got to spend more money. And now I'm looking at works of art that are going to cost me more money, right? Exactly. So this is our DD4 R3. The one I'm touching right now is our M4 A1 R3. And the R3 comes from the new RIS 3 rail. So as you can see, we have our original RIS 2 rail here, which made is what made DD pretty much famous for what we are, because we start out as a rail company. Now it's MLOC. It still offers the same attachment points for M203 as before. So that's what this little nut appears for. So you can still free float a 203 grenade launcher if that's, you have one. Yeah. Um, it's still a two-piece rail. And the cool thing about it is not only is it MLOC now, but it's backwards compatible. So the bolt-up plate that was originally on the RIS 2 is the same bolt-up plate for this. So if you wanted to change it, all you have to do now is remove a rail, put the rail on. You don't have to pull your barrel, you don't have to re-zero, nothing. So it's super user-friendly when it comes to it. And another neat feature that everyone seems to like this year is the reason why it's called a DD4 or an M4A1 when RIS 3 is we now have transitioned to an ambidextrous lower. Yeah, that's awesome. So you'll notice here that you have your bolt catch and your mag release, and then obviously on the opposite side, you got bolt catch, mag release. Also with that being said, a lot of people like to customize their guns, right? Yes. So we put our enhanced bolt catches on here. Yeah. That's Some people don't like that. They want that original bolt catch so they can put a bad lever or whatnot. Yeah. And in doing so, they wind up marring up their receivers mm. with pins. You'll notice on the receiver here, there's grooves cut into the receiver. Oh, yeah. Which allows for easy takeout and put in of oh, a new bolt catch. That's pretty interesting there. So and it's also too, those of you that are just afraid of marring it, just go spray paint your gun. It'll be exactly. fine. Exactly. It's yeah. a tool. That's what it's for, right? <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yeah. So first of all, um, obviously you guys are coming out with this just a moment too late because I just recently did my top five ambidextrous <laughs> AR-15s. Obviously we're going to have to do a part two. Um, uh, but when, are, when can we start, when can I expect to see these shipped to the warehouse? These are probably going to start shipping in April. Okay. So right now we're in the processes of getting them all produced yep. and then we're going to start shipping them in bulk so that way it's not onesies and twosies yeah. when it hit the show the showroom floor at the stores yeah. it's they can start rolling them out fantastic stuff of course it's anti defense thanks for taking the time jason appreciate it man anytime man. yeah absolutely anytime. all right guys so we're over here at the lwrci booth i've got david thank you for taking the time brother i really appreciate it so i seen this and i walked over and i was like oh okay it's a standard di gun we picked it up and it is far from the standard di so right. please tell me a little bit about yeah, what you're holding here basically Every one of our rifles can come California compliant. This is a California okay. compliant. It's not featureless. Yeah. It, it looks like a standard AR, but what we have here is a, uh, an oversized release pin. Release okay. pin. When, when you when you break the action. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And then it's just a quick, and it's, it snaps right back in. Snaps back in the, back in the action. This is a tungsten gray model, ICDI. Um, okay. Which I, what I understand, is a pretty good seller for, uh, for you guys there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the standard DI rifles was one of our top five biggest sellers from last year. Um, obviously, people love it, but I'm seeing some other colors too. So, what is this guy right here? Here's a, an RSR exclusive. It's a, 
It's a burnt bronze. It's a very, very uh, um, popular model. Yeah. Popular Cer Cerakote color. And we Cerakote all of our own um, rifles in-house. All done in-house? Yes, sir. That's awesome. There's a lot of exclusives out there. There's a lot of premier dealers that, um, that, are, that, are, that have exclusive colors. Okay. So you can always find a, a, you know, a unique LWRCI in a, in a unique Cerakote color. Absolutely, man. You know what would be really cool would be a classic firearms exclusive color. Well, we can work that out, man. Maybe we can. We can. work that out. Well, I've got one other tough question to ask you, but if you don't care, why don't we jump over to the SMG let's, platform? Let's do it, man. All right, so we're over here now at the SMG showcase, and I know you're going to hate me, but I have to ask because everyone wants to know, when are we going to see a 9mm or a 10mm or any other caliber yeah. in this thing? Uh, you know, I know that that's been a unicorn in the industry, yeah. but... Right now, uh, the way production is, the nine is is fully moving forward. We see the nine probably sometime in, in 2022. Okay. Uh, and then the other, obviously, the uh, the other caliber options are all 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 being looked at. So yeah. it's just a matter of of where we can fit it into the production schedule. Right now, I mean, the whole problem has been yeah working working against that that, that production backlog that yeah. we have, which Absolutely. is a, which is a great position to be in. But yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think too, like I said. If we see it this year, I will be a very happy camper, yeah, and I'm sure is. everyone else will be as well. But uh, this continues to be a really, really top seller. We've we've upped production up to you know 200 to 250 a month. So we're we're going to keep pumping these things out, and hopefully we'll have that 10 to look at sometime a little bit later on this year. Yeah, awesome. Well, again, man, thank you for taking the time. We really appreciate it. it. Have right, a good one. Great to see you, buddy. You too. We're over here now with Staccato. Nick, thanks for taking the time to talk with us a little bit. And uh, for some of us, you might not know Staccato, so let's go ahead and hop into that a little bit. Uh, you said that you're in law enforcement and that you, you, just, you carry one of these, correct? I have been carrying one of these, yes, for some years. So STI has been rebranded now to Staccato, if anybody didn't know. Uh, STI was more focused on competition shooting. Staccato is focused more on uh, whole heart, protectors of families, protectors of freedom kind of thing. So um, we have a lot of duty guns. Again, like myself, I'm law enforcement, so I've been running a Staccato for some years now. And uh, my job out here is to vet the product and talk to other law enforcement officers and hope that we can get that uh, that agency or whatever to turn over and allow these to be at a department and if they have any questions or anything like that to help them out with that. So Yeah, that's awesome. Can you go into a little bit of detail about some of the guns we got laying here? Yeah, so uh, real quick about these, uh, these are Staccato P's, 4.45 barrels. This one's a threaded barrel, so we have some options for law enforcement if they, uh, if their agency allows for that. Um, all of these are steel frames, but the Staccato P now comes in aluminum frame option as well. Um, some of the, uh, the XC's at some of the other uh, booths, so we can walk over there and show you a little bit. Um, they'll come with a different frame, aluminum frame. Um, if you want to see this one right here, the new grip texture that we're coming out with, right now it's an option for the uh, Staccato P, but uh, the XC and the XL will come standard on those, so if they were to order one right now, uh, most of these guns are going to come optic ready, so whether or not you have some sort of loophole uh, or if you have an acro or a hollow sun, you need the plate for that, and uh, or you can still get the old iron sight for now. So Yeah, right. Absolutely. Very cool stuff. And yeah, let's go take a look at some of the other offerings we got down the way over there. Absolutely. Now, Nick, you're going to take us over here through uh, the Staccato C's and a couple of other different things, right? Yeah, so basically, like I was telling you on the uh, at the other booth, that Staccato is now offering a different experience online. So before, you could only purchase, let's say, a standard gun uh, in a P configuration, optic ready or not. Um, now we're allowing the consumer to purchase it with different options. So um, if you want to take a look at this, this is a Staccato C, 3.9 inch, and now we offer it with the XC cuts, right? So the cocking serrations, little lightning cuts in the front, um, just for the, the consumer can now purchase that. Similar to the XL here, how we have a black barrel instead of a stainless barrel. Now this is an option that you could purchase as well. So just some different options for the consumer. I'll show you the uh, new compensator that we just uh, released here that you can purchase for uh, some of the guns. So Dawson Precision created this compensator for us. It's uh, threads on here and then it uses the uh, toolless guide rod to attach to this thing. So you can run a P with the lightning cuts and a threaded barrel with a compensator now. So a whole lot of different options for anybody looking to get something very custom. Yeah, and I do like all the different options. In fact, you guys should let us know down in the comment section below which option do you like the best and which one would you like to see as a giveaway? <laughs> Nick, thanks for taking the time, man. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. All right, guys, so we stopped over here by the Grand Power booth. I've got Kat. How are you doing today? I'm well. How are you? Good. So I seen this guy, which really caught my eye because it's a lot shorter than anything that I've seen here before, but I also seen this guy too. So this looks like a Glock mag. Is it so? 
It is in fact a Glock mag. <laughs> so we had to cut because it's not a Glock mag. It's a P mag, but it is a Glock mag. It's a Glock compatible P mag. Gotcha. It's a P mag for Glock. There we go. So is this a complete lower? Is this an entire firearm? What do you guys got going on with this? So this is going to be the entire firearm. This is brand new for 2022. So this is the new Strybog SP9A3G. It takes Glock style magazines. Fair. So whatever your favorite preference is, I mean, most people have Glock mags yeah. or Glock like mags. That's the first thing that P people mags ask. Works, uh, of course. Yeah. I, there's people that don't even own a Glock and somehow have Glock mags. <laughs> I don't know. but. So, for the U.S., this was something that people were really asking for, yeah. and Grand Power decided to deliver this year. Um, the A3, if you're not familiar with Strybogs, we have the, the SP9A1, to be technical, and the Strybog SP9A3. The A3 is the roller delay blowback, okay. so this is a little bit better of a system. You've got about 10% less recoil and, and weight reduction, um, but now you can use your favorite magazine if it is a Glock magazine. Gotcha. So this is a 5-inch barrel. Okay, so 5-inch barrel on this guy. So other than the barrel length, is it pretty standard fare for what we've seen so far? For the most part, yeah. So you've got an SP9A3, and now this is the SP9A3S. So you've got your roller delay blowback, but you've got a shorter barrel. This fits in a Michael Kors medium sized purse. Confirmed. Really? Confirmed yes, by yes. You? That's <laughs> awesome. I have to whip mine out after this and try it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. We can get that on camera too, right? Yeah. For okay. Sure. Um, yeah, but no, when we've got our sample back after it was approved, I looked at it and I went, this will fit, and yeah. I stuck it in, and it worked, and I was like, I'm buying it as soon as I can. 10,000%. So these guys are really awesome. Them, particularly the Glock compatible one I think that's gonna be a big one for you guys but you also have some other cool pistols over here so why don't we go check those out let's do it what are we holding here so one of our other exclusive brands is RX Defense and we have two new pistols from them this year okay if you're familiar with the Delta Gen 2 it actually was supposed to re release the last shot show but then that didn't happen okay. so um, this is an extremely modular pistol you've got ambidextrous uh, controls everywhere. Okay. The cool thing about these, and this is why I say it's modular, so they come with five optics plates. It's opti optics okay. ready, it comes with five optics plates, and your slides and frames can be exchanged between any one of the sizes. So That's there's, cool. there's three sizes of the Delta Gen 2. You've okay. got an L, which is your full size, you've got an M, which is your compact, and you've got your X, which gotcha. is your compact slide and um, full size frame. Okay. So we've got a little bit of everything for everyone, but all of those have parts and everything's, all of those have parts that are interchangeable. Interchangeable with one another. Correct. Gotcha. So this year we have the tactical model, okay. which includes, it's suppressor ready. So yeah. you've got a threaded barrel and suppressor height size. It's gonna come optics ready. And everything comes once again, ambidextrous. You have two magazines and everything's interchangeable. So this is the Zero 02S. Okay. We had the Zero One previously, so they slimmed down the grip a little bit. This is an aluminum frame. It's ambidextrous as well. Okay. It's a single action, dual action. Uh, you've got a loaded chamber indicator. This is just a really, really nice, solid handgun. Checkered grip. It looks a little bit more checkered than the last one, I think. Oh, definitely. Zero um, One over there, you can kind of compare it to, but you've okay. got a lot more... Um, surface dimpling. Yeah, so. gotcha. I would say my hands are awkwardly sweaty from holding this microphone and this is like super grippy so I dig it. And 9 millimeter, I'm assuming? Yes, that's correct. Gotcha. I well, should have mentioned that. These are all 9 millimeter. That's okay. Well, we thank you so much for taking the time. It was a pleasure. Thank you for coming by. Thanks. We're over here at POF USA, of course, now. And something new for 2022 is chambered in 9 millimeter from them. And to talk about it, we've got John. Thanks for taking the time, man. And it uh, looks like you've got some neat equipment here in your hands. What's going on with it? So, hi, this is uh, our Phoenix chambered in 9 mil, like you said. Um, it's got ambidextrous controls, a billet lower, and it's got a monolithic upper with a charging handle that can be mounted from either side. Oh, that's cool. um, it's, we pride ourselves on the overall size and weight of this product. It's 17 and a half inches long from front to back. Yep. It's 4.6 pounds total, and it's kind of centered the weight over your hands, so it doesn't really feel even as, as it doesn't even feel that heavy. Right. Um, we came out with our own 35 round proprietary magazine. We did this for a few reasons. Um, couple different things. It keeps the size of the gun smaller. Okay. That was the main goal of yeah. the project. Um, and just 
Control of quality. I mean, some of those, so, you know, Glock mags and all these other mags out there, aftermarket mag companies, it's hard to get good, reliable mags. So we decided to yeah. make our own mag, make it uh, reliable ourselves, and then we can answer customer calls a lot easier. Gotcha. So, yeah, that makes sense. What type of operating system does it have in it? So it's a weighted uh, blowback. Weighted blowback? Cool. Yeah. And I assume this is a non-reciprocating charging handle? It is, yeah. Okay. Big, big, uh, <laughs> we went back and forth in that internally, and I mean, yeah. it was like a non-starter. We, we wouldn't do yeah. a reciprocating charging handle. Yeah, I was going to say, because if I try to actually grip that thing, you know, put, put a stock or a brace on it, depending on how you want to form it, and then it's just kind of like, uh, if I go with that thumb over bore, that's going to hurt. Yeah. So, yeah, ergonomics is all yeah. about this gun, right? So, right. Fold, foldable charging handle, non-reciprocating, you can get your gun, you can get your hand around it, yeah. fire it. Um, it's very linear shooting, yep. can hold it down, can do thumb over bore. I have small hands. Yeah. And, you know, I, that's how I shoot, thumb over bore. And, you know, I, I can't see clamp very well if, yeah. I, if I have a big old... No, front end. I, I totally get that. There's another guy on our channel, Alec. He's got baby hands too, so he yeah. gets no. <laughs> but no, I'm uh, absolutely. And again, the, the integration of the ambi controls, solid. I've been already playing with it a little bit too. You know, we've yeah. so, just waiting around for a little bit, and I was like, let me check that guy out. It feels great. He's not lying. The weighted, the weight on it is very well balanced, nicely done. So guys, check out the Phoenix by POF. Hey, thanks again for taking the time. Hey, thank you. All right, guys, so we're over here at Battle Arms. I got Jay with me. How you doing, man? Pretty good. So what do you guys got going on for this year? So this year we're focusing on ramping up our production, kind of bringing back our our classic lightweight receivers, okay. uh, getting back into our you know lightweight rifles. So we've got a new generation version of our ounces of pounds, or OIP. Okay. Um, we're bringing back the Silent Professional, which we did a limited release pre-COVID, and then COVID kind of blew that out of the water. But that allowed us to go back to the drawing board on some things, you know, fix some stuff, uh, make some improvements. Um, and then we're also working on getting into the six millimeter arc and doing some development there. So long range, long range precision hunters, as well as uh, maybe something, something new, something short barrel in that, you know, in the future. So we're still doing some development testing on it, but uh, we're looking to have this stuff available all this year. So okay. some really cool stuff. Yeah, six millimeter arc seems to be the big cartridge uh, for some reason in this show. I mean, have you guys done any testing with it on your own? Do you know what barrel lengths you're looking at doing or? So right Right now, specifically, we're testing a 16-inch. Okay. Uh, we're looking at a 14.5 and then possibly down to a 12.5. Gotcha. Uh, we've got velocity numbers uh, that look really, really good out of the 16-inch barrel compared to the 18-inch test barrels that Hornady was using. Um, there's it, Surprisingly enough, it's not as barrel length dependent as, like, say, 5.56 is. Okay. Uh, and the 16-inch gun that we actually have here, um, this one was, on average, out of a 10-shot string, was about 25.85. Gotcha. So from 2750 advertised on Hornady's box. So, you know, take that for what you will. Uh, we're doing our testing here at, you know, 2400 feet elevation and dry, dry climate. Yeah. So, that's obviously going to vary, but and there's always discrepancies between advertised velocity and what you're actually getting. Yeah. So, out of a 16-inch barrel, we were impressed. We were making hits on a six-inch gong at 850 meters. That is impressive. Yeah, it's about 850 meters. Yeah. Uh, with this scope, with this setup. Yeah. And one of the things we really like about the cartridge is. It's not as poppy. It's a very steady, stable shooter. Yeah. So if you've got your optics set up, you've got a nice trigger set up, it is very easy to get back on target quickly. For instance, in this gun, once I had it zeroed, just with the 100 yard target, I was able to fire three shots within one inch of each other within less than a second. So it was like shot one and then two, three. That's awesome. Yeah, you can't beat it. Yeah. Uh, the gun just doesn't move. Yeah. And you don't feel it in the shoulder, which. You're sending a bullet that's twice the weight of a, of a 55 grain, yet it doesn't jump like an M4 carbine yeah, does. So. Exactly. So, and I noticed this guy too. This is a cool Cerakote. So, are you guys releasing Cerakote guns like this, or are y'all gonna do? Yeah, Anything we, like that? And we wanted to show this one in that because this, especially for the six mil arc, it's definitely taken over yeah. that that hunter game, um, varmint coyote, uh, predator type style uh, hunt. So we wanted to show something, uh, you know, dress it up a little bit, and you know, potentially make this. Uh, we're looking at either doing it. It might not be a complete gun, but we'll do like an upper conversion kit. So you have your bolt, uh, chambered headspace barrel, everything's ready to go. Gotcha. So awesome, man. Well, sounds good. Well, thank you for taking the time today. Really appreciate it. We're over here with Streamlight now. Quite a few of you guys should recognize them for the awesome lights that they make, but also, too, we do have one of their TLR1s in our current pistol build series on Alex Glock, so pretty cool stuff. Now, with that being said, speaking of cool stuff, 
You've shown us a couple of different things here on the table, but I'm going to let you just take it over here, Brett. Thanks for taking the time absolutely. with us. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. We yeah. appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely. And just have at it, man, because this stuff's, this stuff's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, we have a couple of new products that are additions into current lineups. So we have uh, TLR6, family already exists. We've added a model for the Taurus GX4 pistol, so light laser combo for that. We've added a TLR7 sub into the TLR7 sub family for the Hellcat as well. So two new additions to current lines that we already have. One of the other lights that's a new addition into the Sidewinder family is the Sidewinder stock. So this light has a lot of built-in functionality. Overview quickly has a flexible boom on it, built-in colors in the LED on the front and integrates with the ACH rail right on the side of the ballistic helmets and everything. It also will Velcro and it also matches up with all of our current helmet mounts that we make for the Sidewinder family, so it works with all of those. It also integrates directly on the clip here with the Molly system. So if you wanted to clip it in, it'll clip and lock in so you can't inadvertently bump it and have it fall out. So that's all built into it. A lot of the functionality is here in the front so you rotate, off position, IR, so it will hit white first, three levels of output in white, wherever you leave it, that's where it will stay until you click it off. When you click it off, it's always going to come back on a low setting. So we'll change it over to the color setting. Color setting, five bumps on the switch. You hold it down and it gives you all the color selections for the front. So let's say we want to leave it in green, you wait for green, let go of it. Now when you turn it off and back on, you'll have all three output levels in green and it will stay in that position on your rotary wheel in the color position. The back of the light also has an IR beacon built in in the center of the rotary switch. So safety clip, flip that on in either position, so off is in the middle, on is either direction, that is now beaconing in IR for us. When you lock that switch in the middle, it locks out the IR for the forward lamp and also for the beacon, so you can't inadvertently knock it into IR, turn it on, and also have a dead battery when you go to use the light. This light runs on a single CR123 lithium battery, a AA, or it will function on a AAA battery as well. That's pretty so, cool. Yeah, so that's available in three models from us. It really depends on the accessories and the mounting as to which model you want to select. So you can buy one with all the components to, to do everything or just the light and something in the middle if you need to. The last light that's new from us here at SHOT is called the Bear Trap. This light has both a flood light built into it and a spotlight, 2,000 lumens on, on flood, 1,500 lumens on spot, quickly and easily changes over, so you turn it on, press and hold the button, and it'll change over to the spot to flood. And then it gives you low, medium, and high outputs in both of those functions. This light is designed as a spring-loaded clamp so it will clamp onto just about anything, has a hang hook, the head rotates inside of the framework 270 degrees, so you can set it up, you can hang it upside down, you can, whatever you need to do to mount it, you can do. The other thing is this incorporates three magnets. So anywhere in the outdoor world, let's say you're backing your boat in, you know, it's dark, you can clamp this to the top of your car, light up the boat, the ramp and everything, same thing taking your boat out. Uh, four wheelers onto the rails, anything metal, it will hang on to those as well. That is very cool and impressive too. That's pretty bright even here where it's well lit. See yeah. that reflect even off of a black wall. That's pretty neat. And me personally, I'm, this is going to be going on my helmet very soon. Very impressive. Absolutely. Hey, Brett. A lot of, lot of function in that little package for sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Guys, check out Streamlight. Don't forget to too. also check out our latest in our pistol build series if you're not caught up. Thanks, Brett. Hey, thank you. We you appreciate it. your time. All right, guys. So we stopped over here at KDX Defense. I've got Robert with us. How you doing, man? Hey, how are you? Paul? So what exactly are we looking at right here? So uh, this is a uh, it's our wall of uh, the CDX-50, and we have some of the CDX-40s on the bottom. Okay. Um, talking particularly about the CDX-50, 
Um, we have a couple of different SKUs that we do in the 50 cal. Uh, as far as the 50 cal action chassis, we do 50 BMG, 416 Barrett um, in, in those offerings. And then if we uh, talk about the barrel lengths, we do do a 32 inch, a 29 inch. Uh, this is one thing, like I said, that wasn't, it wasn't relatively a new release this year. We did a soft release uh, last year through some specific communities. Um, this is our tactical trimmer. Uh, it's a 20 inch uh, trimmer 50, uh, 50 degree throw on the bolt. So it's a lot less bolt throw. It runs like a short action, even though it's a 50. Yeah. It, it, very smooth. Um, uh, it was it was designed by a gentleman by the name of Mark Lang uh, from Dallas SWAT. He also is the head trainer for uh, Tac Flow Academy, um, based in Phoenix. Uh, they designed it shorter, so the LE application or use for it, it was a lot more maneuverable inside of gotcha. a up out of the hatch of a Bearcat, uh, things of that nature. Um, as we worked down, this is our Stormtrooper White. It was uh, it was it went over. Uh, really well. Yeah. Um, we did a, a nice picture of it with a thermal uh, clip-on thermal in front of it. Uh, there was snow in the background. It's kind of That's kind like, of a good photo. Yeah, yeah. It went viral. Um, so a lot of people have have been buying these from us. Yeah. Um, it's it's a good looking gun, especially if you're in a in a winter climate. Yeah. Um, kind of working down a little bit. Got the CDX 40 shadow. Um, in, this is chambered in 408. The one below us here is chambered in 375 shy tech. Uh, we do have a 375 enabler offering uh, for it as well. Uh, we actually just had this at the range day. Uh, had a lot of the a lot of the, the guys come out and shoot it. They had a good time. Did it? Yeah, this is awesome, man. I mean, this white I love, but this color is in particular is my favorite. What what color is this exactly? So we, uh, we call this a Stealth Shadow Vortex, uh, and as okay. you can see, we have we have a Vortex scope on it. It yeah. color matches really well. I was about to say, it's, I've never seen anything color match this scope before until now. So it, is, it, it color matches as close as you can get it. Yeah. But it's the, the only thing is it's uh, it's like the difference between a Cerakote and an anodized. Yeah. But it is the closest you can get it with using those two different substrates. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, awesome, man. Well. Uh, let's go check out some other stuff you guys yeah, got. Man, let's go. What is this guy? All right, so what we really did with this new uh, new chassis, um, we took a hard look at how shooters interface themselves with the rifle with their body mechanics. Um, you know, and as we all know, you can you know with the cheek comb and the length of pull, you mm -hmm. tailor that suit uh, you know to fit you yeah. or the rifle to fit the body type. Mm -hmm. So we did two things. We took a look at that general way of setting up, but then we also took a look at um, you know, shooters' hands and all these different things that we can tweak to make it truly a custom chassis. Yeah. Uh, or a chassis that has the ability to be really customized for that individual. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so starting back here, uh, this is our Strike Pro chassis. Uh, it's in a rifle configuration uh, right now. We do sell it as a chassis, as okay. a standalone item. Got our R7 action. Um, it's uh, the, the R7 action, it's got a, a much shorter throw. Uh, it's a Remington 700 footprint, okay. but everything else is organic to us. It does have a Remington style safety. Okay. Um, so a lot of people that may just buy the action, it's got a lot more shoes it can yeah, fit yeah. in, if you will. Um, but you know, talking about the buttstock now, uh, we had the skeletonized buttstock down here, mm -hmm. and that had thumb levers. Yeah. Uh, it was good if you were going to kind of set it once, um, but setting it kind of a, a couple times yeah. a day, it's, it, it became a little uh, difficult to do. So we have quick throw levers on this. This is kind of a newer version of the skeleton yeah. stock, if you will. Uh, you try to close, stay close to the same weight. Um, it's got a nice throw lever on the side uh, for your length of pull. And then for your cheek weld, it's got a identical lever um, that breaks horizontally uh, for your cheek weld. This is ultimately ser serviceable by the end user. Uh, if you take these shrouds off, you can set the tolerance okay. to how you or the shooter may like it. Gotcha. Uh, working a little bit forward, um, you'll notice this portion here from the back strap of the pistol grip up to the front of the trigger guard. Okay. You release two screws on the bottom, and you now can adjust that forward or back. So gotcha. okay. focusing on the general body interfacing with, with the, the chassis or the rifle setup, to get good field of view through the scope. Now we're focusing on how the shooter's hand purchases the rifle, okay? okay? So you now can have that adjustment forward or back. You have the thumb rest uh, on left or right side. Um, so that's another uh, good facet to it. The trigger we came out with um, to go with the rifle is a straight shoe. The straight shoe can be adjusted forward or back. 
via a dovetail uh, interface on the actual bottom of the trigger. And if you need a little bit more real estate forward, you can actually flip the shoe around and it pushes that purchase a little really? bit more That's farther cool. forward. Yeah. So now when you look at people's hands, I mean, we were talking about this a moment ago, mm -hmm. but when you have uh, you know, call it five people with the same body type. Yeah, they may all have the same body type, but you look at their hands, and those are wildly different in yeah. most cases. So, we really looked at that because that really customizes it for that individual. Yeah. As we go a little bit farther forward, you got a nice barricade stop here. Our Arca Elite, which we used to sell as an accessory, that rail is integrated into the chassis now. Um, so it's Arca on the outer profile yeah. so you can still have that traditional Arca interface or you can use our Arca Elite bipod yeah. which is direct Arca Elite shuttle the yeah. shuttle is directly uh, on the bipod so that can go directly on the chassis um, another thing we took from uh, one of our sponsor shooters Lee Stevens uh, shoots shoots a lot for us shoots well for us um, he had asked us uh, if we could do an open top style chassis design you know, for ease of removing its barreled action and then reinserting yes. it. Swapping barrels and stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah. So we came out with that uh, as an answer to that to that market. Uh, it does have an aftermarket top rail that you can put on there okay. for somebody that may want to use a clip-on or yeah. any other accessory for that better. Um, some of the other accessories that we have, we have a girder um, that goes on the rear. It points, uh, you can put a pound and a half of weights on the rear okay. on that accessory. And then we have other weights which you can fit up to three towards the front to really tailor the balance now yeah. of that rifle as you may shoot it off a tripod. Yeah, gotcha. What's crazy to me about this is you're taking, I mean, obviously you can only make a rifle so accurate, yeah. but you're making the shooter more accurate by tailoring not only like their biomechanics, but how they actually just hold the gun. Well, by and large, I mean, that's, as you know, as a shooter, that's the most critical. Yeah. If you have consistent ammo, a durable optic and an accurate gun what's the biggest variable within that accuracy equation yeah the it's person the individual yeah. so if we help that individual to help set them up for success we in turn help our product look better yeah but we also put value to purchase so that somebody can really really be set up for uh, their best performance yeah makes sense man dude this is awesome I've never seen anything like this before but thank you for taking the time and walking yeah. us through it man thank you now we're over here and we're gonna be having some fun I think we're here with George George thanks for taking the time for us well. man and we're with Inveris correct Inveris Inveris excuse me so we're with Inveris and as of right now Katie is completely blind except for her virtual reality that she has stepped into here. Can you explain just a little bit what's happening? Uh, Certainly. So she's in a simulated <laughs> environment. However, if you ask her, it seems pretty real at the moment. Is that about right? Yeah, I'm watching the New York Giants play Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, so there's an, <laughs> there's an actual football game play, taking and, place virtually. And you, know, you know that it's virtual because Dallas is on my tent. Yeah, well, <laughs> th we have to have a little fudge factor in there. So. But Dallas, <laughs> spoiler, Dallas loses. So she's in this virtual environment. She has a virtual firearm, and we're going to, we have some virtual threats that are in there or non threats. It's up to Katie whether she wants to engage these as threats or non threats. So with this weapons platform, she's going to level off at some people, and we're going to say everyone in here is a potential terrorist. Katie, clean house okay. oh that's gonna be awesome and you know what she really wants is to make sure that all of them look like me well I can't do that right now on the fly <laughs> but we'll let your imagination run wild with that so perfect yeah let's let's see it let's Everyone see what happens in this environment is a threat at this point okay, okay. all right cool am I on fire because I I don't have the ability to see that on here <laughs> are you on fire no. <laughs> Uh, what I'm saying oh, is... You, oh, your weapon's on fire. Yes, yes, because it doesn't let me see that part. No, the, you, uh, yes, you're on fire. I was like, no, you're not on fire. <laughs> okay, so we're going to shorten the stock up for okay. you a little bit. Cause it's probably a little easier for you to hold. All right, grab that. All right, and you can raise the side up like you normally would. So okay. you're going to have a, an optic there. So turn that to whoever you want to shoot and fire away. Oh, jeez. And they're down. <laughs> and it's that quick. Look at that. <laughs> that so now so, go ahead. You should have heard a scream yeah. probably before they hit the ground. I did, yes. Uh, we had a, you saw a green little laser indicator there for a, for a millisecond. Yeah. That's to let you know that that shot was an actual hit. Okay. Now, if that would have been red, that would have been scored as a miss. Okay. All right. And awesome. in a post-action 
incident review of this, we can have her play that, we can play that back and she can watch that and, and it'll track every hit, miss, every shot fired, but it'll show hit or miss. Okay. okay. So it gives the trainee or the person in the scenario real feedback and they That's can awesome. say, well, gosh, I fired four shots and only one hit the bad guy. Right. Obviously, I need to work on some things. Yeah. So pretty realistic, pretty, oh, yeah. pretty immersive. You feel like you're in a bar? Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, we'll get you out of the headset before you decide to shoot anyone else, because yeah. I'm sure patrons will come in. <laughs> and we'll, we Dude, look forward a, to your comments. There's a Led Zeppelin poster in there on the wall. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. So, so <laughs> what? I'm going to take that from you. What do you think? Dude, that's that's awesome. Yeah. I'm that's, serious, like, you need to put it on. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll play with it here in a moment. You got to. Like, yeah. it's... So, I can I can understand why something like this and how it is immersive can actually, get, for a training scenario, be yes. an excellent tool. Yeah, yeah, we're having a lot of fun with this, but yeah. this, is, this is a serious training tool. And right. while everyone concentrates on the cool factor of shooting, yeah. uh, much more emphasis is put on de-escalation and yeah. teaching people how to talk situations down peacefully. Everyone goes home. Yeah. No, no shots are fired, no harm, no foul. That's their goal. Things can always turn sideways. That's why you have to introduce firearms and use the force options because some people, you know, that's just their agenda. That's reality. They're not, they have come there knowing they're not going home. Right. And there's no way you're going to talk that person out of that. We put a lot of emphasis on training, a lot of emphasis on de-escalation. As you can see, a lot of emphasis on realism, oh, yeah. realistic environment. Yeah, and one other thing too that I thought was pretty cool that you and I discussed a little bit earlier was the fact too that you can have like a trainer-led scenario who, at that point in time, you're introducing another human element, not a virtual reality type one, because now at that, that point, they can choose to either listen to the commands and de-escalate or escalate, correct? Correct. This isn't a fixed outcome scenario. None of them are. It's very fluid. It's dependent on the trainee or the officer's actions or inactions. So if they're doing things appropriately, we can have this thing resolve as it normally would, right? right. Commands are followed, uh, feed, good feedback is given, things are dialed down. If bad verbiage is used, bad tactics are used, things are naturally going to escalate because those two things create that. Right. So this is a fluid thing. We can make this thing go based on the trainees' actions or inactions. And, and these are usually a roller coaster of these sort of scenarios, right? It's never a, a fixed trajectory where, you know, this guy's bad and he's just gonna keep going bad no matter what you do. It's usually an up and down, right? You start talking to them, engage, get some verbal dialogue, things come down, something might trigger them, things go back up, and now you gotta start back over again. Right. So that's what we emphasize is this is a fluid thing. It's an it's a it's not a fixed outcome. It's very dependent on how well the trainee uses dialogue, tactics, and uh, the environment, yeah. to be honest with you. Well, very cool. Excellent demonstration. Katie, you did great. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, and, and, yeah and you know what? And You didn't hit anything or break any of the equipment, so good job. Thanks. Bonus points. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate that. That was awesome. Yeah, awesome. cool. George, thanks for taking hey. the time with us, man. You're welcome. All right, guys, so that brings day one to a wrap. We just finished up with KDEX Defense. Those guys have got some cool things going on. Make sure you check out all of the other uh, vendors that we stopped by today. Also, we have part one of day one. This is capping up part two of day one, and we'll be here for the rest of the week. So make sure you check out those videos. We also have the industry day footage, which has come out as well. So make sure you do that. Um, like, subscribe. Make sure you guys are getting your entries in for our current giveaway. Make sure you don't miss out on that. And we will see you guys tomorrow from SHOT Show Day 2.